shadowy flight into the dangerous world of a man who is fearless, a young loner on a crusade to champion the cause in a world of reckless automobiles. These are my motoblogs. What's up YouTube? It's your boy Chris out on the gold wing riding with JC. What's going on JC? All right, JC got that bike looking good too, man. It feels good to be back from Texas there, JC. I had a real good time, man. I'm sorry you uh, missed out, brother. We'll catch you next time. That's always next year. Roger that, JC. You know what's going to be in Knoxville, Knoxville, Tennessee next year there, brother. Roger that. No sense of waiting to the last minute there, Roger. Right. So, JC, how are you? Uh, you liking your your J and M uh, headset? Leave home without it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I like yours it's better than mine. I think you got that top of the line J and M headset. Sound good too, brother. Now the uh, the 787 Elite is the top of the line. I gotta admit, it really sounds good. Uh, way better than the last one I had, you know. JC, I also appreciate you helping me running that uh that accessory wire on my trailer. You know that inside dome light was coming on when you turn on the headlights, and uh, if you wanted to turn on the dome light. When the bike is off, you had to turn on the headlights. So I appreciate you running me, helping me running that accessory wire, uh, like I did my old trailer. So now I can turn on the inside dome lights without having the headlights on. I can just hit a switch and turn on that inside dome light by sending power back to the trailer. I appreciate it. Problem, man. Like I said, I learned something today. Um, I don't know if I'll ever have a trailer, but if I do, and I get the same kind, then I'll know you know, what to do, but the main thing, you know, helping a friend out, you know, and, uh, you know, sometimes you need a couple of extra hands, plus I learned something new today. The way it should be, you know, if you got in your car and you were trying to turn on your interior dome light, at least on some cars, all you'd have to do is turn it over to accessory. That's every car I ever been in. And, uh, you know, you didn't have to turn on your headlight you, to, to use your interior light. So if it was for anything else, I could see them wiring it up like that. But considering that was a dome light and a person might have to say you was in a motel out of town and you forgot something and you had to go back out to your trailer and open it up to get something out of your trailer. You didn't have to put your key and then and, and turn on your, on your bike just to get some light inside your trailer. Uh, that was... Uh, that was wrong. That's cutting the corners a little too dark. Yeah, 10-4, and I, I, I do agree. But again, if you have a five-way, if you have a, if your bike is only having five wires coming out the back, then how do you, you set up the additional wire? I mean, you got to power it somehow. So either you're going to have to have a separate wire for six wires, or you're going to have to tap into the, the tail lights. Well, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to tap into a power source, uh, either directly off the battery with a switch, or you're gonna have to tap into the running lights. You're gonna have to tap in some way, unless you have an additional wire. So I, I totally agree with you. It's just that you gotta look at the way the motorcycle is set up, because if you got six wires on the trailer and four wires on the bike, it's not gonna do any good. If you got six wires on the on the on the trailer and five wires on the bike, it's not gonna do any good. So you gotta have six wires coming off the bike for six wires on the trailer and vice versa. Well, yeah, I see what you're saying too. It's just, it seems like 
I mean, I, I don't have a trailer, and I don't, but I know they've been putting trailers on motorcycles for decades. So it seems like that's just the way a harness should be made. I know it just it seems like it ought to incorporate what you what you decided to do by running that extra lead from that switch. It seems like that should be standard. You know, it's a good thing you saw ahead, looking ahead, and you saw that you would want to have it that way. But it seemed like that would just be, it seemed like everybody would want it like that. Yeah, and, and I totally agree. You know, but when you buy the when you buy the kit, when you buy the wiring kit for your bike, so let's say you decided tomorrow you wanted to to uh, install a trailer for your bike and you're gonna need the wiring kit. Well you're either gonna have a four way or a five way. You know, it doesn't it doesn't come with a six way on, on it's either four or five. But you can get uh, that additional uh, line on the karaoke and on the accessory, just in case you want to run uh, power back to your trailer. So you may have a, uh, some extra lights on the outside you want to turn on without having to turn on the whole bike, you know, without turning on the, the headlights. You may want to just turn on your, uh, your LEDs, your ground, your ground clearance lights. So uh, if your bike is set up, then you can run an extra wire. If your bike is not set up, then you just have to tap into the running lights. But, you know, I'm like you, I'd rather have mine uh, separate because you know I, I, may, I may not want to have on the headlights just to turn on uh, the accessory lights there Roger. Yeah I wonder if uh, I wonder if a guy was going if if, if you if a guy went to that to the factory and was gonna buy one of those I wonder if they would tell him about that and explain all that to him and give him an option to put in a custom lead like you did. You know, that's, you know, that's a very good question. Now, I know on the karaoke uh, trailer light uh, wiring kit, it does give you the option to run that six wire. You know, it, it has six wires, but it's set up for you to run five. So I, that's what I do like about that karaoke is uh, it gives you the option to run that six wire coming out of the bike as opposed to just a regular standard five wire, which that's the way most trailers are set up anyway there, Roger saw that video and they were talking about that on the, on the website, on Karaoke's YouTube channel. So I understand what, you know, what you're talking about. I watched that. But here's the question that, that again, I don't have a trailer. I learned a lot today because you work on yours. But let me ask this. The, the difference between, since you already have the option of four or five way standard, what do you, what bonus do you get for that fifth wire in a five way? Is that for the I think it just depends on the way the, 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 the trailer manufacturer uh, wires it up. If you go buy a regular standard utility trailer from a from Home Depot or Lowe's or Tractor Supply, it's most likely to have a four-way flat on the back. The motorcycle trailers that I've seen a five-way flat. Yeah, I noticed they had that the left and right light wired up with their separate power wires. I guess that's what it's for. But like you said, I don't know why they did it that way. You know, I, I don't know why. I guess, you know, somebody that understands trailer wiring can probably explain it better. Why would they use five wires instead of four? But, um, you know, that's why I put the six round. I put the six, the six way round on my bike to give me the extra one for the, uh, the accessories that I can send 12 volts back to the to the trailer for a dome light or a power charger or whatever I want, you know, LED lights or whatever I want to add to the bike. Uh, but just standard, it's gonna be a five-way flat. You can either make it a five-way round, which doesn't change anything, but if you're gonna run that, that extra dome light or that extra uh, accessory switch, then you wanna, you're gonna have to change it to a six-way. But, you know, I haven't seen any trailers with a six-way, you know, I have that, but I have that six-way pigtail, which you, you wouldn't really put that on a motorcycle, but it, it was what I needed there, Roger. It's going to come in handy. Where did you find that at? Uh, I bought it at Northern Tools. I bought it up at Northern Tools. A six, let's call it a six-way round, or a six-round. It feels, 
power that you put in it. I'm sorry, come again there, uh, Jimmy. What what kind of fields did you put in it? How how uh how much can you, what kind of effort can you run with it? Jimmy, I'm, I can't remember. I think it's a 30 amp fuse, and I may be wrong because all that came in the kit. So I didn't have to do a separate. When I bought that karaoke and wiring kit and put it on my bike, it, it all came in the kit. The, the, the relay, the fuse, everything was there. Uh, and like I said, it just gives you the option to, to run an additional line for, uh, for an accessory, a dome light, or whatever you want that's going to be 12 volts. You know, it's there if you want to feed off of it. If you don't, then you can just connect your five-way uh, flat or your five-way round there, Roger. You're running right now. All you have is a light on it, and uh, you could put quite a bit more on there with a 30 amp. You can run all kind of stuff on there, can't you? Buddy? Yeah, ten four. I had to go back and look. I can't. I think it's a 30 amp fuse there, Jimmy. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I, if my memory serves me correct, it's a 30 amp fuse in that in that wiring kit. So uh, I've never I've never blew the fuse. I've never blown the fuse by hooking up anything. You know that last trailer I had, I had a I had an additional uh, car charger in there, and I had additional uh, uh, lights around the trailer. Uh, and so when I'm ready to add some some additional lights to this trailer on the outside, all I have to do is tap into that accessory line and. Um, I can turn on the lights while the bike is not even uh, running. You could, a guy could really get creative with that and put one of those electrical connecting power plates back there on that on that panel you got back there in the back. And you could add, anytime you added something, all you have to do is plug into that panel. Uh, yeah, that's true. You just want to make sure that that the wire that runs to the back of the bike it's going to be a heavy enough gauge to run uh, whatever you're connecting. So you just have to keep that in mind. And you saw how tight it was trying to run that. Uh, I think that was a 18-gauge uh, or 16-gauge running it uh, in between the, uh, the swivel, the swivel hitch there. You saw how tight it was. So you have to take that into account. If you're going to run a power plate back there to feed off a bunch of things, you want to make sure that you got a thick enough, a thick gauge wire uh, for your accessory. And uh, in a case like that, you may want to even run your wiring outside the tongue as opposed to running it down the tongue like we did. Because it would be a lot tighter if you use a thicker gauge wire. You got a point. I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking that you could just run the power plate off of that accessory lead. But if you ran it off of that accessory lead instead of running it off the battery, it wouldn't take long to overload that stuff. Well, that, that extra wire that's, uh, that we added, it actually comes off the battery through the, uh, the wiring harness kit. So it's a pretty thick gauge wire uh, that's you know tied into the pigtail. But if I was gonna hook up a bunch of stuff in the back of the trailer, I would make sure that that red wire that we ran down the tongue, it would need to be a thick gauge wire. You know, maybe something like a 14 gauge or something like that, something kind of thick. We got some truckers out here chiming in now, don't we? <laughs> you get out here on the highway, you see a lot of truckers. They're all running the street. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't hear any truckers. Did they say anything? Not specifically to us. I just hear them because I got my swell turned down kind of low. Break one nine for a radio check. Break one nine for a radio check. Is my radio getting out? All right, I appreciate the break there, big truck. Yeah, I forgot we was on uh we was on the main line. Well, you know, the truckers use nineteen. That's that's the uh, preferred channel there, Rod. Uh, let's take it down the channel. Let's take it down to channel five there, uh, JC. Take it down to channel five. Man, I tell you, it's all about uh, making profits, man. Your uh, your fall lights look good there, JC. Did you just turn them on?
Yeah, 10 I just made sure my lights was on. You can see that green light from the back, too. That's pretty good. Oh, you can see in front. You can see my lights from the back? Yeah, because they bleed through, um, through that metal because it just got a, a thin, you know, uh, little frame around them. Yeah, they show up on the back. But not bright enough to blind anybody, but bright enough to be seen. The truck trying to come over, JC. Kroger's trying to come over. Okay, I was just reading uh, one of my messages from Nick Hag. Nick Hag says, Chris, you are the man, but on the waxing of the windshield, only time will tell. The thicker it gets, it will turn yellow. Well, I guess, uh, Nick, if you it leave it... It will turn yellow when it gets old, but see, I don't think it's going to get a chance to get that old because the cleaner that you use will cut through wax on sometimes. So the only way wax would get that old on that plastic is if you wax it all the time and try to build it up. But it's not paint. You're not trying to do that. You're just trying to get, have a clear windshield when it's storm. Yeah, that's true. I appreciate you there, Nick Hag, for the comments. Um, I guess if you leave your your go wing out in the sun all the time, it will uh, fade the windshield over time. I mean, plastic will oxidize over time. So, you know, like you said, if you just take some F4 custom windshield and, and clean your windshield, you'll be good. But every, every now and then, you know, I will put wax on it. And like I said in my video, I'm not telling you to wax it. Don't do what I do, but that's what I do. Because if I mess my windshield up, I'll buy a new one. It's no big deal. But I appreciate you, Nick Hag, for your comments. But um, I think over the last 20 years, I never had any problems with waxing my windshields on my cars or my bike. So I'm, I'm pretty good. Appreciate it there, Nick. Having a plastic windshield turn yellow is not an extreme case. It would take a hell of a lot of wax and a hell of a lot of time for that to happen. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and leaving it out in direct sun for a long, long period of time, you know, I guess you, you would oxidize the windshield uh, and it could turn yellow. But uh, from time to time, you know, putting some wax on it is not going to hurt it. And if you feel like it's going to hurt it, just don't do it. You know, because like I said, if I if I mess my windshield up, I don't have no problem buying another one there, Roger. And uh, one thing about me there, uh, JC, I put my money where my I put my money where my mouth is. So I, I don't tell a person to do something if I'm not willing to to be the uh, to test it out to be the test subject. Hear you. And uh, you know, when it comes to damage and or windshield, some of those parts cleaners that do more damage. Wax is a protection. So you know, a person will come closer to damage in the windshield with some of those parts cleaners than than you would with wax with close. And uh, again, that was for rain. And uh, when you're trying to get, you're trying to drive a long way in the rain, you need something that's going to beat that wax up and throw it off the windshield. So you buy all me, you know, that was a smart move. How about a truck wash? How about that truck wash? You got it on? Yeah, what you guys charging for that truck wash? Just the tractor is $48 plus tax. That includes the frame, motor, stacks, and a free undercarriage wash. 10 4. 10 4. Uh, what about the top side of the truck? What do you mean, driver? I'm saying the top of the truck. Do you guys wash the top of it, or is that just the sides and underneath there, Roger? All right, well, I appreciate it. What's that exit number? How do I find you guys? 10 off of 55 and 280 off of 40. Come down between the McDonald's and the Petro. Once you turn there, keep straight. We'll be the first building on your right. It'll be a white building trimmed in purple right before the clone shop. All right, driver, we'll look forward to seeing you. 10 4. 4 10, my friend. And let's do it again.
Yeah, I hear you. Hey, JC, man, you be safe going back to uh, going back to Baldnar, man. I appreciate all the help you uh, gave me there today, Roger. And that was JC. I appreciate JC's help, man. JC came over today and hung out with me and uh, helped me with my accessory wire. I was going to do it later, but since I had an extra set of hands, I figured why well, put off tomorrow what you can do today. And if you guys have any questions, drop me some comments down in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, if you need a good trailer, call my man Blake at Time Out Trailers, and he will give you a good deal just like he gave me a good deal. Well, anyway, that's all I have for you guys at this time. This is your boy Chris out on the gold wing, out on the gold wing, the most luxurious motorcycle in the world. And I will talk to you guys later. See you.